Hi everyone, this is Danny Class. I felt for a long time that scales have um, kind of gotten a bad rap when it comes to learning the guitar. There's something that's sort of um, exercise-y about them, you know, something that maybe a music teacher once gave you to do and it felt like something kind of like you had to do. And um, I think that's unfair because I think scales have a lot to offer uh, not just the guitars, but really anyone learning any musical instrument. And so that's what we're going to look at today. Ways to um, appreciate the scale, um, ways to uh, kind of defend the scale really from people who um, it seems to kind of, you know, put it down or say, oh, well, you don't really need to know them, uh, whatever, play by ear or something like that. And so that's what we're going to do uh, with the C major scale, which I just picked because it's one that a lot of people will know and it has more notes than a pentatonic scale so we can kind of do more with it but of course there's hundreds if not thousands of scales so if you know other scales you can kind of you know use one of those to kind of follow along so um now this is sort of beyond the kind of um i guess the uh sort of arguments kind of on almost the intellectual arguments where people would say, well, you should know scales because it's good for music theory and understanding music theory, which is true. Or you should know scales because it's good for understanding chord construction, which is also true. Both things are true, but let's kind of just look at the scale itself and we, um, see how we can kind of appreciate what it can do for us. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna use the C major scale and I'm just gonna play it here. I'll um, put it in tab in the video description. Okay, so the first use of a scale is that it is a great way to warm up. It is a great way to warm up your left hand, um, you know, before you start playing. And uh, it seems for me that the mistakes that I make when I'm playing, a lot of times I can just attribute that to the fact that my fingers are cold. And so um, there's different ways you can kind of use the scale. Again, I'm just playing the C major scale, but I mentioned this in another video. One exercise I do is I go through the circle of fifths with the major scales. So C major scale, and then to a G major scale, and I just send it down to a D major scale. So, that's a very kind of, you know, straightforward utility that scales have that, I don't know, maybe chords don't have because your fingers are kind of stuck, you know, in a way, and they're locked in a position, and they're not moving, and so scales can help you with that. Okay, so the next uh, thing that scales can do for us is that they are a fantastic way to kind of... Um, kind of bookend, I guess, uh, the fretboard and to get some musical ideas going. So what I mean is if I'm playing, you know, the C major scale and it sounds perhaps, you know, just kind of antiseptic, but all those notes we can play in infinite ways. I mean, just to start, we can play, um, you know, like maybe two on one and one on another. example and so and that's pretty straightforward because I'm not shuffling the notes I'm using the same direction of course you can always um, whatever you ascend you can descend in addition to that think about all the notes you have within the scale you can kind of shuffle them around in again infinite ways I should say I did a lesson kind of on this on sort of how to begin to approach that and not feel overwhelmed I'll put a link to that also in the video description 
but and I'm just doing single lines you can always double up the notes too right so now we're getting closer to chord construction in addition to slides in addition to bends in addition to pull-offs So again, I'm just kind of, you know, keeping within the scale and I'm kind of using those notes and coming up with different ideas. The The process of doing that, I guess, would change from person to person. I could only really speak for myself, which is the first process is, is to memorize the scale uh, backwards and forwards, um, just really kind of imprint it into your brain. And then after that, let go, you know, don't think and just let your fingers do what they want, um, usually the left fingers, to find the notes and kind of, you know, shuffle them around according to mood. Okay, so that's another way that scales can be useful. So now let's talk about how scales can be useful for soloing. There's a misconception, I think, it's sort of understandable, where if someone learns a scale, they think, well, that's what I play over a chord. So in this case, you could play, you know, this obviously over a C major or a C major seven, even an A minor chord. But you'll know that doesn't sound very interesting. And so I think it's at this point where people say, well, therefore scales are useless. And that's not true, because just think of the scale as a kind of a bass. Uh, where you can kind of, you know, play the notes as you wish. You don't have to go in order, you can move them around, but you're still using the same the same vocabulary of, of the scale. I don't know, I think of it sort of like, um, you know, like building material, really. And you're kind of building a structure and um, however you feel like it, but you still need some material. I guess the other option would be for um, some guitarists who are very well, um, you know, it's talented by playing by ear. That's another way to do it. But even if you are talented by playing by ear, it seems you could sort of fall into um, a kind of, I don't know, kind of hunting and pecking approach on the instrument and not knowing kind of why the notes work um, within a scale. So. You know, scales can be very useful for soloing as long as you don't just think I have to play the scale only one way. I, I see it as a kind of bass to kind of, you know, kind of jump off and shuffle the notes around. Okay, so now the last sort of defense of the scale that I want to talk about is a kind of a um, sort of counterintuitive way of looking at a scale, which is that what if we just want this, we like the scale in and of itself? You know, like you don't listen to what people say when they say scales are boring. What if you don't think they're boring? What if you like them? You know, you just, for whatever reason, you like the fact that um, they kind of have a destination, you know, that these, they're really these little mini journeys, aren't they? Arrival, and then I'm going back home. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just, you know, playing the notes of this particular scale. Maybe that's enjoyable for you. And I don't know, I don't think anyone should try to talk you out of that, you know? That should be um, good in and of itself, not for constructing music, not for making a solo, just the fact of doing it. That also can kind of, you know, nourish your musical soul and give you ideas down the road. So I think scales are very useful for that because they're just kind of satisfying. Um, just in and of themselves. They don't have to serve another purpose of like the warm up. They don't have to serve another purpose like soloing or something. So, you know, hopefully uh, you found this sort of lesson tutorial, sort of defense rants, whatever you want to call it, useful. Um, I, um, I use them all the time, of course. Um, I practice them all the time, different ones. There are hundreds, again, if not thousands, because there's 12 keys and there's the major and the minors and the dominance and the, um, the, all the modes also, of course. So um, hopefully, you know, you've used these in, in various ways. So happy scaling, happy soloing. Stay well, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.